Hey fam, so I wanted to do something a little different today. And so I am back here in my bedroom where it all began, where I started filming videos on my iPhone. And I just wanted to take some time to read some of the messages that I get from you guys, which I get every day, practically, sometimes several a day um, from you guys around the world. And just share the messages that have inspired me and motivated me and kept me going in the direction I am. And, you know, really pushed me to keep moving forward when I doubted myself or felt like, you know, who cares? Or is anybody really getting any value out of this? And also I think it's really important because so many people feel so alone and feel like they're the only ones going through this. So to see messages from other people who, you know, are talking about the same kinds of things and expressing the same emotions and going through the same situations, uh, it, I think it's helpful to know that you aren't alone and that there are so many more people out there like you and that we're all in this together. None of us are alone and that there's a lot of reason to have hope and optimism for the future. Okay, so first message. Hey, I stumbled upon you on YouTube today and started binging your videos. I was unexpectedly diagnosed a month ago with HIV in the middle of the pandemic and have been struggling a lot with the whole process while being alone in lockdown, especially the physical fitness aspect of what my life is going to be like now going forward. Thank you for sharing so much of your personal journey and your diet and fitness routine. It's really important to have advocates that do more than just party and march and parades. I've been out since I was 17, but I'm not really a part of the gay scene where I live in Florida. So most of what's out there hadn't resonated with me until now. Much love. An HIV diagnosis is such a difficult thing for so many of us to come to terms with. And it, it involves such a steep learning curve. So already, you know, it's, it can be so difficult for a lot of us, but I can't imagine now, especially during a pandemic when we're on lockdown, where we're socially isolating, to have to also wrestle with and come to terms with something like that. Um, the feeling of loneliness can be that much more pervasive. Fortunately, we have things like the internet and social media and, you know, this person, you were able to find my YouTube videos and that was able to bring you some measure of comfort and hope and maybe some education. And so, you know, there is a silver lining in that and a lot of us are turning to the internet. And so that's why I think this kind of work online is that much more important and visibility and seeing role models and people that you can relate to that are like you, setting a good example and showing, you know, kind of pointing the way for those people who are just starting on this path. I can also relate to not feeling like you're really part of the gay scene. I never really felt that way growing up. I kind of, I kind of experimented and tried as I was coming out to put myself in um, kind of like social groups that was like, you know, gay guys. And I did that for a while and it just didn't really resonate with me. And I didn't, you know, I really didn't care to go out clubbing every week or every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. And at the end of the day, it was like, being gay didn't really define me socially. It defines my sexuality, but socially, I, I just realized, you know, I'm I'm the same person and I don't have to try to fit into some mold of who a gay person is supposed to be. And I can have gay friends and I can also have straight friends and, and straight guys and straight women and a mixture and everything in between. And I don't have to go to gay clubs. You know, it's fun to do every now and then, but there's a lot more to it than going to circuit parties and clubs and stuff like that. So yeah, I feel you. And I, and I, there's so many people who feel a lot of social pressure in the gay community to sort of fit into that, to liberate yourself sexually if you're gay, because that's what you need to do for all of us. But if it's not true for you, if it doesn't resonate, if you don't feel like an innate need inside to express yourself in certain ways, then don't just, just listen to your, your voice inside and listen to what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel happy and follow that. And that's all that really matters. And whether that aligns with the gay community or the straight community or no community, none of that really matters at the end of the day. Anyway, that was really long winded for <laughs> what I was trying to say, but you get, you get my drift hopefully. Okay, next message. I can't believe you would reply to that. I'm a big fan, Rafe. I wanna share my story to you. I'm a nurse working in the UK, but originally from the Philippines. I've tested positive last August, 2019 with no symptoms at all. Started taking ARV right away and I became undetectable after a month. At first, everything is overwhelming. Mental health plummeted to its lowest, but step by step, life becomes normal again. Right now, I'm working in a COVID ward. Daunting and anxiety level is at peak, but my patients needed me most. So here I am fighting and thriving. You were there during my darkest moments. 
I watched all your videos on YouTube and you served as an inspiration to me and to all people living with HIV. Please do not stop being an advocate and there's true voice for everyone. You're a star. Thank you so much for that message and thank you for all the work that you're doing um, as a nurse, as a frontline healthcare worker. I think it's so important that we continue to celebrate this group of uh, the community and not just in the healthcare industry, but anybody who's routinely working and putting themselves in at risk of, you know, getting COVID. There are so many places around the world that lack education. And so there is stigma now against healthcare workers. You know, nurses and doctors are getting attacked on the street. They're getting kicked out of their homes, out of their apartments by landlords. They're getting called slurs and names and being stigmatized as spreaders of the virus. And that's just insanity. And it just speaks to the fear that's out there and the resulting stigma as due to a lack of education. And that the very people that are there to help us are the ones that are being persecuted now in many places around the world. So it's really important that we take time to acknowledge that. It's so true, it can be so overwhelming and so like daunting in the beginning to come to terms with a diagnosis, but really you said it really well, it's step by step. And it's something that you can't rush. It's something that you um, kind of grow from day to day, um, minute by minute, moment to moment. The most important thing is that when you're diagnosed, you listen to your healthcare professional, you take their advice, you start your medication, you take it as prescribed, and that's like the very basic, the foundation. And as you start to educate yourself and become more familiar, your mind will start to, to ease. And as you start to create a rhythm and as taking the medication just becomes part of your daily routine, eventually it just, it carries as much weight as having to take a multivitamin every day. At least that's the potential. If you allow it to just become part of the routine and part of your life, and the other really important thing for you guys to focus on when you're dealing with that is to not be hard on yourself. Don't judge yourself or criticize yourself. It doesn't matter how you got it. It doesn't matter um, what you were doing or what you didn't do. It doesn't matter if you were being safe or unsafe. None of that matters. What matters is that you take care of yourself now. Having HIV doesn't take away from who you are. It doesn't change who you are. It doesn't make you less than. It doesn't make you less worthy of love none of that changes. It's just a stupid little virus. It's just a bunch of like organic matter that just replicates and that's it. You know, it doesn't mean anything outside of that. We give it so much meaning that it doesn't deserve and that can be really, really harmful to our health and to our happiness. And so I want to make it very to accentuate that it doesn't matter and that you have the control over your own thoughts to say it doesn't matter and to not buy into that and you deserve to be happy and healthy and live a fulfilling life. And most of us, most people by and large, can take their medicine and be healthy and live a full life as long as anybody else. So anyways, thank you to this person in the Philippines who's doing incredible work. Oh, and I wanted to add to the message before about the fitness part. I am, the reason why I look like this, my hair is all a mess and I'm in my workout clothes is because I'm doing live workouts on Instagram I was doing Tuesdays and Saturdays, and now I'm thinking I'm gonna add Thursday as well. So it'll be Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And right now it's at 11 a.m. And it's only 20, 25 minutes, and it goes by really, really fast because I've got music, and it's upbeat, and it's fun, um, but I really get your heart rate up, get you sweating, and we really need to focus on our cardiovascular health, especially right now with the pandemic, because the more that we can boost our immune system, the better of a fighting chance we're gonna have if we do contract the virus, especially because it, it tends to attack the lungs and doing things that are really aerobic is gonna help our lungs clear out any excess crap that's in there. So even if it's not something for you to be doing the live workouts, which I highly recommend, if there are friends or family members, loved ones who you feel could benefit from that, please share that with them. It's on my Instagram, which is my name, Raif Dorazi. Good day, Raif from South Africa. I recently got diagnosed with HIV on ARVs and I'm only 26 years old. I see you positive, energetic, inspiring, happy, all positive. And for me, I haven't told anyone except one friend, not my family, not even my close sister. Every day I tell myself to be positive. Every morning before I wake up, I get bad dreams and my heart starts to pump so fast and my energy goes back to zero. Please help me. 
Thank you so much for sharing that with me. And I'm sorry that, you know, you're struggling so much with this and it really sucks to not be able to tell the people that you're closest to something that you're going through, especially something that is so challenging. I hope that in due time, you will be able to find a chance to at least share with your sister who you're closest to. I know for me, that was really like something that helped me get through it a lot was, you know, I'm such an open, outspoken person about my life and being transparent and honest. So the first thing I really did was I told everyone. I told my family, I told my, my closest friends, I told my coworkers. So immediately I created this giant network of people that knew about what I was going through, that were there to support me and help me. And that really helped a lot. But I know that in so many places around the world, that's just not an option because education is not where it needs to be. The stigma is still really strong. There's still a lot of fear and anxiety about it. And it, and it might actually put you in real danger to talk about it openly. So I get that and I empathize with that a lot. But I do hope that at the very least, over time, you might be able to find one or two people that you can actually confide in who can be there for you in person to support you. But even if that's not an option, if that's not a possibility, you have social media and you have the internet and you have um, online based communities who can be that support system for you. So, I mean, imagine the time before we had the internet, what, how, what, what could people do? There was no way to communicate with people if they weren't with you in person in real life. So if you couldn't tell your immediate family or friends or coworkers, you were isolated, truly alone dealing with that. So I'm so grateful that we have things like the internet and social media where we can stay connected with people who are like-minded, who understand us and who support us. And this is why I encourage doing things like gratitude journaling so much. I do this practice every morning. First thing when I wake up, because my brain is fresh. It's, we're starting from scratch. And before anything has the chance to influence my thinking, my, my energy, my emotions, I want to set the tone for the day. So I sit down at my computer, I open up my blue little journal, and I write five to 10 things that I'm grateful for. And I try to write different things every single day. And as I'm writing these things, I imagine what it is that I'm grateful for. So for example, I'll think of something off the top of my head. I say, I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to exercise from home. So I'll write that out. And as I'm writing that out, or even after I'm done writing that out, I'll think in my head, I'll imagine exercising at home and how good that f makes me feel. I try to bring the good feeling of whatever it is that I'm thinking about as I write it down. So I'm feeling it, I'm thinking it, I'm writing it down, and then I end it with an exclamation point to really emphasize like, I am grateful for this thing and it's really good. And then I do that again on the next thing and I try to think of different things every day. And so that really starts my day in the mindset of thinking about all the things I do have and thinking about all the good things that I am grateful for instead of focusing on things that are negative or things that I don't have, it changes your perspective. And I bring that up because it's easy to say, you know, like, woe is me. I can't tell my friends. I can't tell my family and just fixate on that and be like, I'm alone. I'm alone. I'm alone. This sucks, you know, how am I gonna get through this? I don't know. Instead of, if you're sitting there consciously forcing yourself to things, think of things that you're grateful for, then your brain will go, oh, I can, I can go online and, I can, and I'm grateful for that and I'm grateful for the social media. So instead you start focusing on the, the solutions and the possibilities and the opportunities instead of the problems and the scarcity and the lack. So reality is the same, whether you focus on one or the other, the reality is both are true, but it's deciding to put more emphasis on the good than the negative. And in the long run, that helps you because you start being more solution oriented instead of problem fixated. So that's my little nugget of advice on that. Um, and I did a little video and I posted a card to that. So please check that video out on gratitude journaling if you haven't yet. Okay, next message. Hey Raif, I had commented on one of your YouTube videos. I just wanna say thank you so much for your videos. You have helped me so much, you have no idea. Your videos are just so informative. I found out I was HIV positive in December and you are just down to earth and you help so many. You are truly a blessing. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time to write me and to say that. And I do want to emphasize the fact that I really do, I work to read all of your messages and try to respond to all your messages as well. And sometimes it takes me a while 
Some of you like know that you're like, oh, I messaged you a month ago. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. But sometimes it takes me a while to get to most of your messages, but I really do try to get to all of them and all the comments and all that. But you're very, very welcome. And I'm so glad that it helps. And I just hope to keep making you guys proud and, and doing meaningful stuff. I don't always make content that's like super serious and super meaningful. I try to do some things that are light and fluffy and whatever and just get a get a range of different content but I definitely want to make sure that I'm always coming back to my foundation and my core which is talking about things that are meaningful and powerful and moving and that help us all grow and to become better human beings because that at the end of the day is the main reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hello there, I am from Bali. Bali's Indonesia. I am part Indonesian. How are you? Hopefully you're doing great. First of all, I'm HIV positive about two years now. And last year I got tested and it is undetectable. I want to tell you the situation that I'm facing right now here in Bali. My doctor told me this morning that they ran out of the ARV stocks. Do you know any solution for this? To be honest, it scares me. The whole situation stressed me out. So he's talking about the ARV, which is antiretroviral medication. It's the medication that we take for HIV. And I'm assuming now, well, actually, I don't know, because that was in December. So he's telling me that the medication is, has run out there for some reason. I don't know why that is. That's pretty concerning. I don't know if that situation has improved now because with the lockdowns everywhere globally, I'm sure that's interrupting medical supplies in a lot of places where the supply stream isn't as strong and robust and things can break down very easily. So man, that's really tough. I don't know. I don't know the situation in Bali. Being more aware and conscious of what's going on globally with HIV is something that I want to tackle and become more focused on. It was, I was even thinking earlier this year, I wanna be able to travel to different countries around the world and to do HIV advocacy in different places and to do public speaking. That's a goal of mine. And I wanted to, to try to go to a country this year. I don't think it's gonna happen now because of everything that's going on, but I definitely wanna be more aware, aware of what's going on out there and to also put myself there and to hopefully try to lend my voice and my advocacy in person in those places as well and to help foster supportive communities. But my heart goes out to you. I don't know the situation and I don't know if doctors have recommendations for if they know that they're not gonna have access to drugs, what the recommendations are. I don't know. I can't give you any advice in that because that would be medical advice and I can't do that. Please keep me and keep me posted, keep me updated guys. In the comments below, let me know if you guys are having, if you're struggling with access to medication globally or even here in the US, because I think that's something that we should be talking about and communicating and getting out there more so that the people have the chance to address that. Okay, moving on. Hey man, I've recently discovered you and want to thank you for the work you are doing to shine a new light on modern HIV. I found out I was positive in June of last year. I was in the hospital because of my seroconversion over New York City World Pride. So the irony really dug deep. I saw the post about someone whom you saw on the flow and was inspired, and I just want you to know the same. I'm getting better and better, but now with COVID-19, it's making my mind swirl. We stopped the world for this pandemic, but my God, HIV still rules Africa. So he's talking about World Pride, which was in New York City last year, and it was my first time going to that. It was amazing, and I got to go with AIDS Healthcare Foundation. I was on top of their bus the whole time, and I had uh, living with HIV scrawled on my chest because I really wanted to make that visible for, I knew there was gonna be millions of people lined up on the street and I wanted to show like, look, I'm really fit and I'm really healthy and I'm living with HIV and that, that that's what it means to be living with HIV today. It's not what it used to be. And I've gotten messages from people over time that were like, oh my God, I just realized you were that guy that I saw on the bus with the writing on your chest. And I really just realized I've been following you on YouTube and you're the same person. <laughs> so it's really cool to get that full circle and I'm sure that hit you you know, pretty hard on some level to be in the hospital because of your HIV diagnosis while pride is going on. But the good thing is that we have come so far and the medication has come such a long way in our understanding of HIV that now it really is not something that needs to hold you back. Even with COVID, my doctor told me that I'm not at any greater risk with getting COVID-19 as far as my health is concerned because my um, HIV is under control, because I'm undetectable. And for those people who are undetectable and your CD4 counts are in healthy range and you're on your medication, 
there's really no extra reason to be concerned about COVID-19 than any other person would be. So I want to re offer you that reassurance and know that doctors by and large have been saying people who have their HIV under control, you're not at any greater risk of symptoms from COVID-19 than um, anyone else. Hello, I just watched your videos recently in YouTube about HIV, how to accept about it. I'm newly diagnosed, it's very hard. I'm always crying, no one knows about my status. It's very hard to fight in a battle, thank you. I do have at least one video where I talk about dealing with HIV an HIV diagnosis and coping with it and what are some things that you can do for yourself to really give yourself the best shot at handling this in the best way, in the most healthy way, and to also tackle your own fears and insecurities and to, to do a little bit of soul searching and self growth, which I think a lot of people need to do. And the diagnosis is a good opportunity to take some time to go inward and to like really figure ourselves out emotionally and what's going on inside. And with that kind of self work and inner growth, that can really help you and propel you as you come to terms with your HIV diagnosis and then just help you in your general life overall. So it's just a great opportunity for growth in general while you reclaim your health, your physical health. Okay. I think I'm going to stop there. I do have a couple more, but I've been, I talked a lot more than I thought I would. So I think I'm going to stop there and I would like to keep doing this. If you guys think it's it, cool, it's kind of like a little sit down and like, let's chat and go and like respond to your messages. If you like this, if you, if you think this is something that you would want to see more of, please let me know in the comments below. I will take your input very much into consideration in deciding whether I continue to do something like this. I just think it's a little more informal, just kind of chatting with you like we're best friends talking through the, the screen. And um, yeah, please like this video if you liked it. If you feel that there are people in your life who might benefit, enjoy, might become educated by watching this video, please share it. Friends, family, loved ones, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell just so that you know every time that I post a new video and you can not miss that because I'm trying to post more often now and try to do a whole variety of content. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.